high intensity capsule of the powers of the subconscious mind if we unleash these powers it becomes a part of our system because we see everything begins from the mind the genesis of everything is where based thoughts thoughts translate into feelings but thoughts and feelings are not visible that is below the datum level we cannot see them but feelings will manifest into actions actions are visible when actions are repeated they become behavior when a behavior is repeated it becomes a habit and for a habit we don't have to exert pressure right for brushing our teeth we don't have to exert effort for driving a car we don't have to exert effort first time in our childhood we had to when we brushed our teeth when we learned driving we had to but after that it becomes normal it becomes a part of our system it becomes a part of our dna similarly we are able to harness this power of the subconscious mind it will become a part of our dna and success will come naturally to us that is what i said our aim is that each one of us starts attracting success that the way our heart beats that, that the way our eyes blink we don't have to exert pressure similarly success also becomes a part of our lifestyle effortlessly it comes to us this is dr kepas and he also did a lot of research on the powers of the conscious mind as well as the subconscious mind another great man where he says that our analysis our thinking our plans our short term memory everything comes in our conscious mind but if you look at what we call as our intuitions our spiritual connections when we are on autopilot mode it when it comes to our long term memories that is all a part of our subconscious research was carried on and research went on in fact what we understand is that the mind is like an iceberg what we see friends is only the tip of the iceberg what we see what we understand is the conscious mind but what is there below is around nine times that is the subconscious mind that is below the datum level a lot of research was carried on and then came another great man dr maxwell molds i will share his findings with you also the interesting part friends is that dr molds was a plastic surgeon right? he was a plastic surgeon he used to carry out plastic surgeries people used to come to him with deformities that my face is deformed my ears are deformed or i've got obesity can kindly cure i should look better and he used to carry out plastic surgeries when he was carrying out plastic surgeries he realized he says that i realized that people change not only does their physical self change but their mental self also changes their approach to life also changes their success ratio changes their stamp on life also changes so he felt very good about it and he published a paper and in that paper what he said is that when i cure people of their physical defects when i rectify their physical deformities through my plastic surgeries actually not only their physical self but their mental self is also becoming better but we all know that there are critics there are cynics in this world cynics are plenty and they jumped on him they said dr mauls how can you say that are you sure can you support can you authenticate can you validate what you are saying dr mauls do you have figures he did not have figures he said no he was apologetic but then he resolved he said i will start keeping details and he started keeping logs when he kept logs of every patient how that patient came and what he did and what was the impact on the patient he realized that the result was something else and it was not a complete change for everybody not everybody changed in fact he realized that there was a big set of people after he was keeping records that there were 30% 30% 30 for whom no change actually happened for a lot of them there was a lot of change after the plastic surgery 70% after the physical deformity was changed their mental self their confidence and their success ratio changed but for 30% there was no change at all he started studying those 30% because he realized that he actually had been proven wrong by those 30% he started studying them and then came the startling conclusion those 30% were the people who had come to him and said that dr molds i have come here because my father has sent me in for this plastic surgery you know i know nothing is going to happen with this 
today you are going to remove this obesity from my midriff, from my belly. But tomorrow it's going to come back. So it's not going to make any difference. But nevertheless, my father wants it. So please do it. Somebody who had come to him, deformity after an accident, please set my nose right. But I know that you actually cannot set it right because people will ultimately realize that it is deformed. There still is a scar which is visible. So I know Dr. Maltz that your plastic surgery has got limitations. But nevertheless, you can carry it out. So this was common in all the 30%. The commonality was that before the surgery they had expressed doubts. They were cynical whether things will change after the surgery or no or things will come back to where they are before the surgery. And for those people who had doubts that things will not change, things actually did not change. And for the ones who came to him, that Dr. Maltz, I've been having a tough time. You know, there was some problem with my hormones. And I put on weight, but sir, if you set me right, believe me, I'm going to answer life straight on, face on and full on. Or somebody said, it was a misfortune, I had an accident. But I know, sir, that with your knife, with your scalpel, you can wield magic. Please wield the magic on me and life is going to come back full speed. Please do it. And the ones who said this, life actually changed for them. And then came the revelation by Dr. Maltz. That yes, the people, those who thought that things will change for them, for them, things actually changed. For the ones who had decided beforehand, before the surgery, things will not change, things actually did not change. Then he published his hypothesis, which also has become a world bestseller where he says that yes, it is the power of the mind. And it is, I talk of my senior, my guru, Dr. Joseph Murphy. The subconscious mind is all powerful, said Dr. Maltz. But he says, there is one more thing I want to add over here to Dr. Murphy. That this subconscious mind which wields around 88% of our mental powers is like a block, is like a machine to whom we can give direction. We can either project it, we can guide it, we can direct it, we can channelize it towards success or we ourselves can direct it towards failure. Where we want to put it depends upon us. And he says that us, that is where comes into play the conscious mind. Because he says that this conscious mind has got analytical power, it has got willpower. The subconscious mind doesn't rationalize. The subconscious mind cannot think, but it has got all the power. Giving the right direction to the subconscious mind will depend upon our conscious mind. But he says, here we are friends, this is the most important part, this is the subconscious mind. It depends upon us whether we can take it towards success or whether we can put it towards failure. And how we put it towards success or failure, over here the role is going to be played by this small power called as the conscious mind, which is we are going to apply on our subconscious mind. 